Thank you. Am I on? All right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you that are still here in the room. I know this is the last talk, so I appreciate uh, your time. And also those of you online, thank you so much. So today we're going to be talking about quality consideration for those transition biological products. So the learning objectives uh, for today is to understand the chemistry, manufacturing, and control considerations for biological products subject to the transition provision upon being deemed BLAs on March 23rd, 2020. Uh, here's your challenge question, just something to keep in mind uh, while I go through my slides. There's not going to be a wrap up at the end, but just keep in mind that by the end uh, of my presentation, you should be able to name at least three CMC considerations for those biological products subject to the transition provision. Uh, so this is a short outline of my talk today. So first, we're going to go over what are the uh, quality assessment responsibilities uh, for the sub-offices within the Office of Pharmaceutical Quality for drug substances composed of amino acid polymers? And later, we're going to talk about uh, CMC and quality considerations for those biological products after March 23, 2020, when they are deemed a BLA. So you saw yesterday uh, the organizational structure of OPQ from Dr. Kopsha. Uh, today, I want to focus on the middle row uh, there, where we have the Office of Biotechnology Products, the Office of New Drug Products, the Office of Life Cycle Drug Products, and the Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. These are the offices within OPQ that are in charge of the quality assessment of drug substance, drug products, facilities, and manufacturing processes. So OPQ uh, is considering um, assigning the review responsibilities of drug substances composed of amino acid polymers based on two things. One is the size of the product. And the second thing is the manufacturing process, whether it is made entirely by chemical synthesis or derived from a biological source. So those uh, drug substance amino acid polymers that are less than 40 amino acids and are either made entirely of chemical synthesis or derived from a biological source, and those products between 41 and 99 amino acids that are made entirely by chemical synthesis, those are going to be reviewed uh, by the Office of New Drug Products for investigational new drug applications, by the Office of New Drug Products and the Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment for original applications, and for supplements to approve applications, the review responsibility will be uh, under the Office of Life Cycle Drug Products and the Office of Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Assessment. Now, for drug substances composed of uh, amino acid, big, bigger than 41 uh, amino acids and derived from biological sources, or higher uh, or longer than 100 amino acids, and both derived from biological source or made entirely by chemical synthesis, those products will be reviewed by the Office of Biotechnology Products for investigational new drug applications, and the Office of Biotechnology Products, and the Office of Pharmaceutical uh, Manufacturing Assessment for original applications and supplements to approve uh, applications. So now we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about the CMC and quality considerations. Uh, for those products that are going to be deemed to be a BLA after March 23rd, 2020. So as you heard from Janice uh, just right before me, on March 23rd, 2020, an approved application for a biological product under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act shall be deemed to be a license 
or the biological product under Section 351 of the Public Health Service Act. This means that an approved NDA will be considered uh, or will become uh, an approved BLA. So we expect uh, the impact of this transition to be very minimal, since all of the CMC requirements under both the PHS Act and the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act address many of the same type of CMC considerations, ensuring the quality of biological products. So for example, identity, strength, purity, and quality. FDA anticipates that most biological products subject to the transition provision upon being deemed BLAs will meet the related general BLA requirements, for example, potency, sterility, purity, and identity under the PHS Act based on the products having been previously approved under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act. So now we're going to talk about uh, some of the CDNC considerations. So first, we're going to talk about requirements to report or to provide different information. Uh, and the first thing we're going to talk about is lot release, distribution reports, and notification of manufacturing problems involving distributed products. So under 21 CFR 601.2, the FDA may require BLA holders to submit samples and CMC data for each lot product for FDA review and release. However, uh, FDA generally does not anticipate that lot release requirements will apply to the DMBLA. And there's two reasons for that. One, uh, this lot release requirement was eliminated for well-characterized biological products in the mid-90s. And once the company has demonstrated its ability to consistently produce acceptable lots and has, produce, uh, has procedures in place to prevent the release of lots that do not meet the specifications based on product history, it is not necessary to verify lot release. And we think that um, these deemed BLA products will meet this requirement. The second CMC consideration uh, is lot distribution reports. So for BLAs under 21 CFR 600.81, the lot distribution reports are submitted to the agency every six months. And they are mostly uh, have more granular information than those required by NDAs, which are submitted to the agency annually. However, we anticipate that this information uh, will be readily available from manufacturers. So you know, the information should be very easily uh, converted. And uh, the sponsors of the DIM BLAs can also request a waiver to provide product distributions report annually uh, under 21 CFR 600.90. Their consideration is notification of manufacturing problems involving distributed products. Uh, so there's going to be a change in reporting. So for NDAs, any issue related to manufacturing problems is uh, reported to the agency via a field alert report. Uh, and for BLAs, we'll be using the biological product deviation report. Uh, a few differences between BPDRs and FARs are that the BPDRs are submitted as soon as possible, but not later than 45 calendar days from the issue uh, being brought up. Um, and for FARs, for field alert reports, uh, those have to be submitted within three calendar days of the manufacturing issue being discovered. FDA expects that the change in reporting from FARs to BPDRs will present minimal burden uh, to the holders of the MBLAs. So we're going to move on now to considerations for post approval changes. So at the time that FDA deems the approved NDA for a biological product to be a BLA on March 23, 2020, the FDA also intends 
to administratively convert any pending supplement to SOCIA approval, approved NDA to a pending supplement to the deemed BLA, and to review such supplements on their applicable standards for BLAs. However, we're going to have the same expectations uh, for, for the sponsors to demonstrate that the post-change product continues to be of acceptable quality, so there's not going to be any differences there. However, there will be some limited differences with respect to the timing and the evaluation of certain data in the submission, the verification of this data during the review cycle and on inspection, and differences in validation data, which are required to be submitted in the supplements to a BLA. So supplements for process or manufacturing size changes must contain process validation data. So for that, the process should be performed at commercial manufacturing scale. And the process validation should be conducted prior to the submission of the supplement. And the data derived from those studies will have to be included in the supplement. In terms of comparability data, uh, it's going to be very much the same as for NDAs for biological products. The extent of your comparability data is going to be commensurate with the type of change per ICHQ5E. Uh, so for example, you should assess the impact of the change on the product critical quality attributes, for example, potency, as it relates to safety and efficacy and provide that information in your supplement uh, for the BLA. The next two points, batch analysis data and stability data, are go the requirements for those are going to be the same for biological products currently approved under NDAs that will be deemed BLAs after March 23rd, 2020. Also, supplements for site changes uh, or for manufacturing changes might be subject to an inspection. So the manufacturing uh, site or the manufacturing facility should be ready for inspection and should be manufacturing the product for which the change is requested during the supplement review time. And the facility must comply with the inspection requirements specified in the relevant regulations of 21 CFR 600. And we recommend that during the submission of your supplement to your BLA, you provide a production schedule for the complete product when, when you submit. Now I'm going to shift gears a little bit and talk about master files um, and BLAs. So FDA currently does not permit BLAs for biological products to incorporate by reference drug substance, drug substance intermediate, or drug product information containing drug master files. For biological products currently regulated under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, uh, they have been able to incorporate by reference information on drug substance intermediate and drug products containing DMFs. So the FDA has a proposed rule in which an, applica an application for a biological product approved under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act and deemed to be a license on March 23, 2020, and on that same day incorporated by reference drug substance, drug substance intermediate, or drug product information contained in a drug master file may continue to incorporate by reference information containing that DMA, DMF after being deemed a BLA. This proposed rule will also codify FDA's existing practice that an application for a biological product under the Public Health Service Act may rely on a master file except for information regarding drug substance, drug substance intermediates, or drug products. And it will also codify FDA's existing practice that information from master file, including drug substance, drug substance intermediate, and drug product may be relied on at the investigational phase of any BLA. 
So in summary, uh, as you heard from Janice before, the definition of biological product as amended now includes protein, except any chemically synthesized polypeptide. On March 23, 2020, an approved application for a biological product under Section 505 of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetics Act will be deemed to be a license or a BLA under the PHS Act. And some CMC considerations, so this is the answer to your challenge question, uh, are requirements for lot release. Lot distribution report uh, are a little bit different. Um, considerations for post-approval changes and the data that should be submitted with the supplement and the need for an inspection during uh, the review of the supplement. So that's all for me, and thank you so much.